Now, the funny thing about uh, having a relationship with God is that it's not something that everyone can be able to generalize. It's not something that you can be able to say, this is the particular way that I have a relationship with God or you should have a relationship with God. I think what is important is that we all need to know that in us is a greater spirit than what we know and what we can even imagine. And in my case, I was born a Muslim, uh, grew up a Muslim. I discovered God as a Muslim. And in my journey as a young man, especially when I was in high school and I wanted to have my, my high school exam, the national exam, that's when I remember when my faith became very, very deep and I was consistently seeking out God for help uh, because I wanted to achieve uh, this exam. It was very important to me. And then later I had achieved the exam. I, I got a scholarship to go and study uh, medicine. And when I got there, I remember that was one of the you know the most tumultuous times of my life because I was I was out having I was having uh, partying I was having fun I was you know like and all these types of you know relationships and things that I was doing which was not uh, let's say holy uh, but I was having these revelations at the time uh, that the devil wanted to take over my mind I, I literally remember even when I would pray I'd put my head down on the floor and and I would see. Uh, the devil and his horses, you know, charging towards me, charging towards me. And and I then the, the, rather than being afraid, my question was, why are they coming after me? Like, why me? Right. And, and that made me realize that there must have been something special in me for the devil to make me his his arch enemy, like to, to, to put a, a, a target on my head and say, OK, I have to destroy this young man. It meant that there was something he he was trying to achieve, which I, I, I was, I was part of the, that plan. Like I, I, I could stop him, or I could. There was a reason why he was focused on me. But then, after I dropped out of med school, I went through a lot of my own personal challenges, and um, I had a lot of questions. I was questioning a lot. I was asking a lot of friends about, you know, God, and I was doing a lot of research about different religions. And I realized that, you know, a lot of the religions that we ha are abiding to and that we believe in. Um, are based on, you know, cultural, historical uh, beliefs of people according to, you know, different geographies that they were coming from. So each community, each, each religion was born within a particular historical context. And that had defined a bit of the way the people uh, had associated themselves to the religion and their belief towards God. And so uh, Coming from an African, you know, culture, historical background, and, and, and also with, the, you know, the beliefs that the African system also has, uh, let's say the West African system has, where, you know, people believe in, in witchcraft, people believe in, in marabouts, people believe in, you know, black magic and all those things. And then they use religion as a means of how to either enhance that or, or diminish it. Um, I, I found that a bit confusing. When I interacted with people who were coming from, you know, an Asian background who were maybe Buddhist, or I interacted with other Africans who were um, uh, more uh, um, atheists, right, uh, or who, who who had their own, you know, personal beliefs, that these beliefs also were based on their own, you know, personal experiences, their background, their historical, you know, uh, background. And so that made me question uh, religion. And I said, maybe there's something behind these holy books. Maybe there's something, you know, that I need to go deeper. And I couldn't go deeper if I was still part of the religion, because then um, the beliefs that you cannot question a religion, that you're blaspheming when you ask too many questions about a religion, were, were limiting. And my friends at the time, uh, the people who were around me, actually thought I was going nuts because... I was asking all these questions and they were like, no, no, you don't question religion. You just you just do what it says. And I thought to me, not being able to understand uh, what I'm praying to God, because I didn't understand Arabic, but I was praying in Arabic and not being able to communicate with God in a language that I could understand was also limiting. So I wanted to be able to talk with God and communicate with him in a language that I understood. And I wanted him to be able to respond to me in a language that I understood. Uh, but there was there was nothing there. And so I became a free thinker. And when I became a free thinker, it became easier because then I could have these long conversations with God and I could tell him everything I had on my mind. I could ask him what I needed and, and I would see that manifest in my life. I would see how he would transform me through 
the miracles he was doing in my life. And, and um, the funny thing about that was that um, when when I decided to to leave Europe, uh, which was forced, uh, if you read my book, you'll find that I, I had to leave Europe after uh, I failed to get into his school. I, I failed to get my first book published. I got rejected by 14 different publishers. I found myself in the street in Paris, and then, you know, my parents sent me a ticket to come back to Guinea. And um, that whole experience in itself was, you know, bonding with God. But I wasn't, it wasn't like I was doing the right thing as well, because I was smoking, I, I wasn't disciplined, I was, you know, partying when, when I needed to party. I was, I was really not, you know, anchored. I just had a strong belief that there was this power that was driving me, but I wasn't abiding to the rules of that power because there were no rules that I was following anyways. So I came back to Guinea, um, did my time in Guinea, um, you know, started some projects and businesses there that failed, went to Senegal, started the same things that failed as well and dropped out of school there as well. And, and I was having this life that was going into these different cycles of up and down, up and down, up and down, and there was really no... They weren't even ups. It was just like down and down and down and down and down. And um, I didn't know which direction to go. And and um, and I had a family. Imagine I had a daughter. I had um, a fiancé who, who was really expecting for us to get married. And um, then we got married. And we got married. I didn't know what was what were the values of marriage. I wasn't you know responsible. I couldn't take care of them. I didn't. I wasn't earning an income. And um, and it was it was really a difficult time because it was a time when I had no purpose, I had no clear clarity, I had no clear purpose, I had no direction. Uh, I just had a faith. I had, I had faith. I had faith that I would succeed. I had faith that uh, one day I would be able to take care of my family, take care of my people, be there for them. And so, in in this whole entire journey of trying to figure out who I was, I didn't know God. And so I went on four years and started having a lot of successes, um, built, you know, uh, the first agro-tourism retreat in the country, uh, started with, you know, a movement for entrepreneurship with some friends, um, then later got selected for the Yali program. Um, and about that same time, all this time I was a free thinker, like I had a vague, um, you know, like a generalistic view of the world no discipline as into no rituals or no habits that I would abide to as to how I would relate with God. Uh, I would respect all religions. I was open to everything. But there was no no grounding. You know, I wasn't grounded. And because I wasn't grounded, I wasn't doing the things. I, I didn't have any, any, any high moral standing. And so I, I, I wasn't, you know, attached to anyone. I, I was in a relationship. I was in another relationship. Um, and even to those two relationships, I wasn't honest, I wasn't faithful, I wasn't, you know, straightforward. Um, I, that led to, you know, a, a, a separation with my, 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 my now ex-wife. Uh, another partner I had, a very good friend who we had a very deep, strong relationship with, that also went, you know, uh, that also was destroyed because uh, there was no deep, you know, there, I wasn't there, you know. My, my, I, my body could have been there, but my spirit was not there because I, I didn't know who I was. And so when I left Guinea for the Yali training and, and I felt like that was an opportunity to restart my life. And then I found myself in Kenya for, you know, this other vision that God had shown me to you know, pursue this bigger vision. Um, it was like a reset button, you know, like I literally pressed the reset button and said, okay, I want to reset my life because it's not going where I want it to go. It's not going where I don't even know where it's headed. Right. And so. I came to Kenya, I had a very difficult first year, I think, which I believe it's also God who was purging me. He was literally you know, punishing me for the things that I had done, but he was refining me. He was taking off the layers of, you know, those dirty layers, those those dark layers, those layers of, 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 of lack of understanding, of lack of maturity, of lack of discipline, of lack of, of focus. And he took all those layers off, and they were difficult because it was a lot of challenges, a lot of difficulties, a lot of humiliation, a lot of um, desperation. Um, it was a very dark period of my life as well. But at the end of it, that's when I knew, that's when I discovered Jesus. Um, actually, after I met my wife, my current wife, I discovered Jesus. And discovering Jesus was more like, like meeting someone that you thought you knew, right? And that for whom you thought like you had a whole 
you guys had such a relationship together. You, you had been, like you knew each other, but you didn't know who he really was. And then now you're introduced to him. Now you're told, okay, this is Jesus. This is who he is. He died for your sins and you are forgiven forever for everything you've done. Whatever you've done, what you think is bad. He died. God sacrificed him. Just like a lamb, he sacrificed his own son as a lamb, as a human being who was killed and his blood shed so that you are forgiven. And now that he's dead and he's gone, he came back. When he left, he left the Holy Spirit. That that Holy Spirit is what has been guiding you all this time. It's what has been talking to you all this time. It's what was there even when you didn't know it existed. It was telling you that you're special, that there's something you're supposed to accomplish. And that now you have that. And because you have it, you can do the same things that Jesus did. You can heal the sick. You can cast out demons. You can lift the dead. Um... You can, you can make miracles happen in every aspect of your life. And that resonated with me because that was what I knew. I, was, I knew God was there, but I was, I was always going to him. God, I need this. God, I want this. God, do this. God, do that. But I never asked him what he wanted of me. I never asked him what he expected of me. I never knew that he, he was the one who was supposed to guide my life. It was me going to him and telling him, okay, God, I want you to do this for me. And that's how I discovered that... The real purpose of our lives is to fulfill the destiny that God has set for us. The real purpose of our lives is to live the purpose that God, for which God created us. And I knew my purpose. I knew it. Like, I hadn't defined it clearly, but I knew it was to empower people, great people, so that they can do more for other people. Because of my own personal experiences and the things I had learned, I knew how to help people grow. I knew how to help high achievers grow. I knew how to help people who had already surpassed them, the, you know, the average things in life, but they were stuck. And I knew how to help them go to the next level. And God wanted to use me, as he's using me now, to help those people achieve greater things in their lives for the benefit of so many other people. And so I am talking to you today to tell you that God has a purpose for you as well. And no matter what is your background, no matter where you've come from, no matter what you have endured, there is a purpose that God has for you. And that purpose will be fulfilled if you keep pursuing it, if you believe that it's going to happen. Because you have a role to play. It can't just happen on its own. Like, you have to play a role. You have to show up. You have to be there. And once you're there, take it. Let God use you for the great purpose that he has for you. 